Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bolin of Bolin Small Engine, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about where you can potentially find the model type and code on a lot of these Briggs engines. Uh, it can be very difficult, especially if you're new at this and you have no idea what you're looking for, and you're trying to give numbers to a small engine tech or a uh, small engine mechanic that, of course, you were wanting to source parts for you. So I'm going to start off by telling you guys the most typical place is right here on the valve cover, which, as you see, I've zoomed in on here on this particular engine. Although on the older engines, you are going to find them here on the blower housing. And they were typically on top, and there was a little tag, and I'll be able to show you guys that momentarily. As a matter of fact, how about I do that now? As I said, this is the tag that you typically see on a lot of the older engines. But Briggs didn't just limit their stamping to the blower housing on top and to, of course, the valve covers. They even did it on the backs of these valve covers, which as you can see, this one doesn't have it. But your little small push mower engines, they did. And a couple of your five horsepower of the past did. This, of course, is another one that's got the tag on it. This, of course, is a five horsepower. But as I said, on your push mower engines, you typically found them here in the back. This, of course, is a little three and three quarter horsepower Briggs. And as you can see, there's the model type and code on the back. Now, Briggs, later on, they got lazy and they didn't mark the numbers model type or code, okay? Or I should say they didn't put the number or the letters model type and code on there. <laughs> Getting tongue tied here, guys. Um, what they done in their laziness is they just decided to take the numbers and just slap them on the valve covers and on the uh, sides of the blower housings and not really give anyone a clue as to what the model type and code was. Now if you're experienced you're going to be able to pick this out fairly easily. Okay this right here of course is the model, this right here is the code on top and this right here is the type. Okay as you can see if you're confused about that the code is 010814 FD the model is 126432, and the code, is, of course, is 0036-E1. And why they done that, I truly have no idea. It looks like to me they would have actually wanted to put the model type and code, okay, above these. Uh, sure laziness, I'm sure. Now, as I said, you're not going to see these numbers on these particular... Uh, blower housings for the uh, OHV engines. Don't get me wrong, there were a few, but very, very rare. Now there will be a few of you say, well Kevin, I have a push mower and I can't find the model type and code on my push mower because everything's covered and I don't know where it's at. Well, it's typically, as I showed earlier, right in the back. And this can be difficult. If you look, you will see that there is a model and a type and a code on this engine. It's just kind of hidden underneath this plastic covering for the uh, blower housing or shroud if you will. Some people like to call it shroud. But you can see the numbers are there. As I said, on a few valve covers, because most people are going to look there, there will not be a model type or code on the valve cover. And that can really suck because that's typically where most people look for them. In which case, you should, as I said, look for the model type and code on top of the blower housing. Now, as I said, because Briggs didn't limit where they place model type and code on these engines, you're even going to find them on little tabs. Now this one, of course, is rusted over. And this is a little 5 horsepower Quantrum. It can be a real pain in the butt, especially when they rust over like that and you're trying to identify the numbers. But this is also a place to look for the model type and code if you're confused about where to find it. Here's a little bit better example. As you can see, model type and code is there. And as I said earlier, this of course is your model. This, of course, is the type, and this, of course, right down here at the bottom is the code. 
Now that you guys pretty much know where to find the model type and code on these engines, I want to go over a few of the basic parts that are on these engines that people are relatively confused about what they are. Uh, I'm going to start off with the starter, even though that's not too confusing. Guys, you know, it's just basically me being thorough here, okay? <laughs> Alright, so in case you don't know, this of course is a starter. And this is found on 90% of the small engines that you come across in today's market, okay? Uh, reason being is most are electric start, okay? There are a few that are recoil assisted, but most typically are electric start. Now this of course is a regulator. And regulators are put on these engines pretty much all the time nowadays because of power takeoffs, uh, electric clutches, whatnot and what have you, okay? But what a lot of people don't realize is these regulators have to be on the engines. A lot of people think that, you know, if they go bad, they can just pull them off, take the AC wire, which is right here. As you can see, and this is the AC lead wire that comes off of the stator. And if you're confused about a stator, I'll show you one momentarily. But this AC wire goes through, through the yellow wire here, into the regulator. And the regulator, of course, changes the AC to DC for your battery and it gets led back out onto this line here which of course makes its way through the war harness and back to the battery or key switch all right so as i was saying there are several different types of stators i'm going to show you the one with the regulator first this of course is a dual lead ac war that comes off of this uh, stator and leads to a regulator as you can see it's a little bit bigger but as i also said there's the little small red wire for your, you know, your output for your DC. So it's relatively simple, but just a little bit better stator than what you would typically see here on this engine. Now the stators of the past, of course, and this is very confusing for most people. It would look typically look like this. And as you can see, there's a single black AC wire, which is great for lights and all but not too great for charging. And then of course they have a DC which has a diode in it. Now if you're more curious as to what these stators are and what engines they were on, I do have another video that I made in the past that can better assist you in that. But typically this is what you would find on a lot of your older engines. Uh, your 12 and a half horsepower L heads typically had these and some of your OH, or I'm sorry, your L head um, opposed twins. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are even a few OHV uh, single cylinders that had them as well, but as I said, these were typically used in the past. And, uh, you know, that was, of course, a uh, mower that didn't have a electric clutch under it. Now I want to talk to you guys about the fuel pump. Now the fuel pump can be a little confusing for people. First of all, because a lot of people don't realize what it really is. This, of course, is a diaphragm fuel pump. And as you can see, there is a P, and I will zoom in on it here, on the fuel pump. That P is your pressure side of the pump, or your impulse side of the pump. And as you can see, this line goes all the way around. And leads straight back into the dipstick tube. As you can see, this is a dipstick, and I'm going to zoom out so this can be better seen okay and like I said all it does is just takes the crankcase pressure and converts it to uh, pressure for the fuel pump here or the impulses shall I say that of course will pump the gasoline from the tank which is this line right here coming into the top and of course make its way through this line and down to the carburetor. Now guys that I'm at the carburetor I want to explain to you guys what this part is. A lot of people are very confused about this part. This is an afterfar celluloid and they're typically found on a lot of the equipment that you're going to encounter in today's market. Okay, uh, There's various styles. I'm going to show you that this of course is uh, for this little Nikkei carburetor here and there's another one that you would typically see on the Walbro as well. But uh, anyway, these afterfar celluloids actually have a little rubber plunger on them. 
and they will typically come off when you run the engine. So if you ever get an engine that's just running erratic and it's going, you know, just like whoom, 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 and you're wondering why in the world your engine's doing that, that is a really good spot to start, okay? Because as I said, they got these little rubber plungers on the end and they fall off and they'll get sucked up onto the jet and the engine will try to die or to flutter. It just acts erratic and crazy as it can be. So this of course is an afterfar celluloid and I'm going to show you some others. And I think there's even one up there that has the little tip on it so I can better show you what I'm talking about with the little plunger that's at the end of them. Yeah, this one is a pretty decent example. Highly similar to what you would see in this. This is a little rubber plunger that I was talking about. And they typically come off. And it can be a real pain in the butt when they do. So this, of course, is a different style after far celluloid. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this one came off of, I want to tell you, a Kohler Courage. I'm relatively certain of it, actually. This, of course, would be the one that you would see on a Briggs. And, of course, it's just solid. It doesn't actually have the plunger. I actually prefer these. So, YouTube, if there's any questions out there from anyone as to something that I didn't potentially cover, please let me know. I would like to add that the intake manifolds, this is a really good spot to start. If you have an engine that's been running hot and you're curious as to why, it's generally because of an air leak and that's generally because of the little seals or gaskets that go on the intake, which as you can see this one is typically red and it would be right here. Until next time YouTube.